Hello again, and welcome to part two. <clears throat> uh, there's one little bit of show work I forgot to, to show in part one, and that's this little channel we have to cut out here for the control board wires to go through. Uh, you can see I've mounted the rev switch in there. Nice bed of uh, epoxy putty, which has got pretty good adhesion on its own, but I've also uh, built it up around the edges to hold it in a bit more and put a couple of screws in. That isn't going to go anywhere, and I'm going to put some hot glue around there when all the sulcan's done. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, here's our lovely Aurora cage, all ready to be installed. We've got the wheels. I tested those to make sure they're spinning in the right direction. That's where the positive feed's going to come in. And a uh, little tip, if you haven't got a, a depth gauge, you don't want to buy uh, feeler gauges, I cut down part of a strife wiring channel works very well on strife cages. Put your wheel on, just gently, and then you just squeeze it down until it hits this. And that is about 1.4 mil. You do it on both sides and you get your wheels lined up pretty much perfectly in century, so that's good. And great, that's ready to go in. I also uh, use some thread lock on there, stop the screws coming out. <coughs> the only other thing I've got to do is clip these out, which is going to take 13 seconds. So I'll do that now. And when we've done that, we can get onto the wiring. Soldering iron's heating up nicely. So that's all good. This is just to make a little bit more uh, space. There we go. Give that a quick file. Oh, a little rough bit there. Yeah, I'm just going to nip that out. There we go, get rid of the rev true. I only really bother doing this if I'm using sorry about that. That was a delivery a delivery lorry. I'll file that a bit. Just to make sure that's there's nothing rough poking up there. There's a little rough bit there, I'm just going to knife that out. Remember, always cut away from yourself. There. That's pretty okay. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wire this in last, and there's a reason for that. And the reason is that the... Uh, just to make sure I keep everything in shot. The reason is we've got that tiny little hole there and we've got to get our battery connected through that. And we can't, so what we're gonna do is wire the battery connector up first. Oh, that needs to be a bit hotter. Okay, so. Positive wire here, and I'm going to just strip the end right about there, twist that, clear up your workspace as you go, and that, don't need that. One of the nice things about the Aurora cage is it comes with its own, uh, not only its uh, wheel mounting screws, but also it's own cage fixing screws, which is nice. So we'll put that over there, don't need that, don't need that, we've used that. Dart to test the uh, wiring a bit later. We don't need that, we don't need that. Okay, do we need a screwdriver? Well, I'll keep one anyway. We do need that. Okay, now then. We've got our wire, now we've got our heat shrink, which is good. Uh, 
Oh, we're good to go. I'm going to remember my old part of the battery connector. A decent XD60 has the polarities marked on it. So, where's our solder? Here we are. Make a bit of space, why don't we? Get that in there. about as far as that's going to go. Okay. Turn the tip. And I think I'm going to try something different this time. I think I'm going to see if I can just wedge this in and then solder both. No, it's not going to work. I have to tin it. Oh well. One, two, three, four. Whoop. And then push to open tweezers, just come in here, hold that in there, one, two, three, four, and tin, okay, I'm going to hold that, put that in there, Jobs are good. Right. Well, just drop the heat shrink. Not to worry. That bit's on a bit, a bit on the thin side anyway. Heat shrink lasts for years, especially if you buy it in bulk. <coughs> so I'm going to cut off around right about that much. And while I've got this out, I'm going to cut it for the other side so they're about the same length. There we go, get rid of that. Now, you may be wondering why I'm not uh, cutting this to length yet. There is a reason, and all will be revealed shortly. So I'm gonna thread that on there. That over there. One reason I like to uh, Heat shrink these separately as I do them. Is that it gives time for the uh, XT60 to cool down. So now we're going to test this. We're going to work out the length for this. I'm going to feed that through the hole and down towards the normally open. We want this be fairly close in there. We want that to be about there. Well, ideally I'd like it there but that's probably not going to work. Kind of a bit like that. So yeah there. We'll put that in there. What we've got to do now, I'm going to wedge this down here and there's our normally open. So we're going to cut that there, and we're good to go. I might as well measure the uh, rest of the positive line while I'm doing this, because it'll make the rest. I'm just going to tuck down inside there, down through there, down to here, cut a little on the generous side, whoops, sorry. Ideally, I'd have an overhead mounted camera, but I haven't, so you'll just have to put up with that. I'm going to cut this on the generous side, because you can always cut a bit more off. You can't put any more back on. That's all that's left of uh, 30 metres of red I bought about a year ago. Okay, so there's the positive. Now we're going to wire in the negative side of the equation. So there we are. The negative side, if you've got a cheaper XD C60 or you can't see the polarity marking, it's the, the beveled edge that's negative. So that's going in there. And here we are with our, our black wire. Strip the end. I don't know 
why they made these at an angle on this side. It is a complete wonder to me, but they did. So there we go. That's better. Okay. So clean the tip, tin it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There we go. And then that goes in there. One, two, three, four. Ta-da. Okay. Now, because there's tons of this, I'm just going to measure roughly before I cut this. I don't want to feed you know, 15 metres of black wire through a little hole. I'm going to cut that on the generous side as well. Okay. So we get rid of that. And then we can heat shrink the end. There we go. Where's the lighter gone? You know, it doesn't, oh, there we are. It doesn't matter how neat and tidy I try to be, it never works. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, which is. Uh, I think this is 13 mil. I don't really know. And I'm just going to add a little bit of reinforcing by heat shrinking everything again. If you've got heat shrink that's a bit too uh, thin, you can stretch it a bit with a pair of pliers, which makes your life a fair bit easier. So I'll thread that through there. Dee 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 dee. That will just slip over there and we can heat shrink that. There we go. Oop. That's not quite on properly. Give that another quick burst. Okay, let's feed this in. I'm going to want the red going first. Then I'm going to want, ah, come on. Red in there. Now I'm going to want the black going through second because of the way they're going to be rooted. So we'll do this. And we are. Good to go. So that's the first bit. So far, this is just like a uh, a standard semi-auto build. However, we've got to put the kit in, and this is where the fiddly starts. Because what we're going to do, if I get the kit out, oh, I'm just going to go and touch a radiator to make sure I'm not going to short anything out. Okay, I've grounded myself, and now the box, the correct box. Okay, this is the that's the circuit board we want. So put that over there. Basically, what's going to happen is that this, which has the uh, this is the driver board. This is what makes the actual thing work. And you see on here it says 
battery. Now this is the battery terminal, so we're going to keep those little wires in. We don't need bigger wires than these because the motor doesn't draw that much current. We don't need this bit. We can remove that because if you wire it up according to the printed instructions, this will go to your flywheels. That's a 20 amp fuse, it'll blow. So what we're going to do is look at this. This fits in like that. Yep, this is why we need the uh, that bit there. So what I'm going to do is have this coming off to the negative feed and this coming off to the positive feed. And I'm going to do that about there. So I'll mark that, mark that, and the black, well, we can pretty much put that in fairly uh, fairly easily. Is that going to fit in there? No, it's got to go around the other way. Okay. Bend that out of the way. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in about halfway along there. About halfway along, so I'm going to mark that there and there. And in order to keep the board as free from getting knocked about, I'm going to put it back in its anti static bag because it just plugs in and out. Once that's done, I can keep that nice and safe until the time's come to use it. So, we are going to have to do a bit of splicing. I'm going to cut a little sliver of insulation off. Spliced onto there, and this bit. Let's see if I can recall that mark. Uh, that was where did I put that? There. And do the same thing here. I'm going to cut a little sliver of insulation off be careful if you do this at home. These things are ridiculously sharp. So that's going to go in there. <clears throat> and that's going to go there. I'll cut that a bit later. I'm going to insulate that from the uh, plastic by holding up there. Bam, 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 bam. Da, 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 da. Make sure that's tinned properly. And I'm just going to tin the other end. Oops. One, two, three, four. There we go. And while I'm here, I might as well tin this bit. Two, three, four. There we go. So that was that way, wasn't it? Yeah. Let's just check at the bottom. So yeah, it's like that. Hold those together. Whoops. 
It's a good idea if you don't burn any of your shell while you're doing this. And there we go. Right, heat shrink time. This is going to get stretched a little bit to make sure it goes over. Slide that on. Covering that, and then we're going to heat shrink it. There we go. That's the first bit done. Now. <laughs> Once we've got this done, the rest is just plugging it all in. So, I'm now going to check with this. These do only fit in one way. It's just remembering which way that way is. So I think that goes in like that, yep. So that fits in there. And that will fit in there, and that will fit in there. So we're going to, yeah, there. Just going to take a little bit off on this. Again, I'm going to cut it on the generous side. Don't be removing these too often, but. Uh, I don't want this anywhere near a soldier knife just yet. Okay. Same procedure. I mean, really, once you've done this, it's just a matter of... I already tuned that, didn't I? Duh. go another bit of heat shrink stretch that a little bit okay So now we're going to wire that up. Now I'm not going to tin this because there's a hole I can use. So I'm just going to twist this up fairly tightly, put it through this little hole here, as much as possible. And bend that over. I'm going to solder on both sides of this. Clean, tin, and one, two, three, four, five. And the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Da, 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 da. There we go. Soldered. Should I put a bit of heat shrink on that? Yeah, I'm gonna. Why not? Let's make it look like I'm a professional and I know what I'm doing. <sighs> of course, the problem with doing this is that if something goes wrong and you have to redo something, you've got to cut all the damned heat shrink off. But there you go. Kind of everything. So, we're pretty much cooking on gas now, people. All we got to do is 
is this, and then so drop the flywheel cage. And I'm going to go and have a cup of coffee before I do that. Same procedure. Little hole. In we go. Make sure there's a good contact there. Tin it. One, two, three, four, five. There oh, yeah. And that's on. I'm not going anywhere. Don't to heat shrink that because the other terminals heat shrunk. Fit that in there. <laughs> Do push these bits down and you'll need to try not to damage the insulation. It's not a good idea. Okay. There we go. That is basically it. If this was a select if this was a semi-auto strife, it'd just be wiring up the cage. But it's not. So that's that. Get rid of that. And move on to the cage. I know I want a cup of tea. Or coffee, or something. Right, suitably refreshed by coffee, <coughs> we can get on and wire up the flywheel cage. And if I possibly can manage to stop knocking the damn camera. Okay, this is the positive side. That's closest to this part. So I can now cut this, cut these two wires down to size. Uh, okay, right about there for that one, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, that will work. If this is too long, I can always feed it into this area here, where it'll also help cushion the. Uh, Cushion the circuit board, yes. And on this side we've got that, so uh, I think I'll leave that the length it is. There's enough space in there. Especially with these bits cut out. Okay, I've already cut and uh, stripped these. Uh, I'm not one of those people who likes to use one long bit of wire just tinned and soldered to each terminal. I like to use the holes because it's more secure. And that means I'm going to have to splice these together. If I can, what I want to do is actually get up physical connection as well. So I'm going to open that up a little bit and see if I can wedge this in here. And open that up with a bit of that. Doesn't look as pretty, but it will be very solid when it's done. <laughs> Is that going to work? Let's try again. No, we're just going to have to tin this. Oh well. It was worth a go, wasn't it? It's always worth trying something. There we go. So, the usual thing. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I'm going to come in from the top on this, so I want this to uh, come at that angle there. And this is the reason why I'm doing this before I attach the wires to the actual flywheel cage. It reduces the chances of me making a mistake and actually melting part of the cage. And it makes it a lot easier for me to uh, get things in the right orientation. And of course, it means I can heat shrink it properly. There we go, that's a nice splice. Oh, heat shrink. Heat shrink, heat shrink. I'll cut the other bit while I'm here. There we go. Get rid of that. Open this up a little bit. And put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> Need a lighter. There we go. And we'll do the other side now. When we've got this done, we'll be able to test the flywheel cage. fun. Remember when you're soldering you're applying the heat to the components that's a shit bit of tinning that's better rather than to the solder that way the solder flows onto the components and you're not actually spreading it about. There we go. And the same thing, going to come in from the top. Mm, yep. That way around. I used to just hold these in my bare hands when I started doing this, but uh, after a while you get tired of being burnt. Nah. And the trouble with filming this at the same time is I can't actually see what I'm doing, because I can't get my head right over the damn thing. No, don't like that. I'll do that again. Put a little bit of a bend in there to make that easier. There we go. That's better. No. Okay. Yeah, we can't we can't use that. I'm gonna tin that again. I don't think I had enough solder on there. Here we go. That's better. Yep, that's solid. Okay. The rest of this, once it's done, is nothing but assembly. Oh, that wire's hot. That wire is hot. That needs stretching more. That's better. So we're almost done with uh, the soldering iron. Get in there. There we go. There we 
there we go. So, <clears throat> positive side is going to be there, and the negative side is going to be there, and they're going to get fed in like that. So, when you're doing this, it's important that you don't end up with uh, wires touching both sides of the battery uh, of the motor case, and that can lead to shorts which are bad. So I'm going to take a bit of care and attention using my uh, yep to make sure that we're not actually touching the can with any wire at all. One, two, three, four, five, there we go. You don't need a lot of solder. You really don't need too much solder on here. Out, that's hot. That goes through there. Make sure there's no wire touching anywhere else. go that's the negative yeah that's gonna fit in there nicely good and we'll just do the positive now same procedure okay that's good I can see that's good from here Go, we go. Well, make sure that's fairly neat. No, and there we go. All right, uh, let's just check that. There's a little bit of wire that needs to be lifted up there. That's better. Good, 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 good. Yep, I think that's good. Okay. That needs a little bit more solder on the end. Right. Now let's test it. That's a tight fit. I'm testing this with nickel metal hydride because if there is a short somewhere, this is a damn sight safer than a light pipe. Plug that in there. And let's see if I've got this the right way around. Where's that dart I was going to use for testing? Where is it? That works. Try again. Jobs are good. Alright, there we go. Now we can screw all this down because that is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. The only thing we've got to do is put on the, uh, the rest of the kit. I'm not going to bother uh, going through the, this is me doing some screws up bit, because, you know, that's fairly redundant. I'm going to make sure that everything tucks in nicely, though, before I do that. And then we'll get on to the, uh, 
the fun bit with the kit. There you go, look, plenty of space. All good. Hopefully that will, uh, that will work out. So I'll get all the screws done up and then we'll go on to the actual assembly of the uh, select fire part of the kit. Okay, uh, got everything in. Rev trigger works. Although that does need to be a little further down. So what I'm going to do when, uh, when I'm putting some hot glue around here is glue this down as well. Plug the motor board back in, and now we're going to put in the uh, the motor itself. These things will only fit one way, so you don't have to be too worried about that. There you go, there's the motor. The board sits there, and the motor fits in there. There we go. What we're going to do now is not put the pusher in next. That's uh, that's a mistake. What we're going to do is put this in. This is where it starts getting fiddly. This is your main uh, control. This is where the, the switch for the uh, selector goes. That's your selector switch. That's the inside bit of your uh, control panel, and this is the bit that goes in there. So, this fits in like this. You see these two little switches? They're the ones you want. So we're going to put that in there. If that fits. Aha! I do have to take that bit out. Okay, not a problem. I thought I could leave that in. Make the motor fit a little more, a little more uh, securely, but apparently, it was the first time I've done that, so I just gotta slice a bit of this off. There we go. Circuit board in there, get the motor in there. Yep, that's all good. And this fits in here. Oh. Got driver printed on here. This will fit onto there. Don't want to use too much force with these, and you don't want to take them out any more than you have to. So it's a good idea to get it right first time. Oh, yeah. If you can. <laughs> Okay, that's in there. Twist that around a little bit. Ah. Oh, the fiddliness. This bit, there you go, fits in there. <coughs> now, Huh, there's a little plate that fits on there. And that contains some screws, a couple of springs, and the replacement uh, magazine release. So our trigger is going to go here. I don't know if you can see that, that's going to activate those two screws, those two switches. Well, it would activate this switch, except that switch has been rendered irrelevant because we're not using it. This piece fits up here. 
So we then take these two screws and we screw it down. Screwdriver. Yeah. Bigger screwdriver. I had a bigger screwdriver. Where is it? There it is. Right. Mm. 3D printed parts again. There we go. Get the other screw. Put that in. Get that started. There we go, that goes on there, and then we'll just screw that in. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to check that this is smooth. I'm just going to scrape a little bit off there to make sure that that is flat. And put that in there. This just slots under there. And there we go. There. Nice big trigger spring in there. Screw that in place. <laughs> Basically as well as avoiding burning anything out, what we're doing <sighs> yeah, that will have to be glued down there ok, now you've got this other screw here uh, that is going oh sorry, this other switch here, that's actually for turning the kit on and off, you can turn the kit on just by pulling the trigger the instructions say you should actually turn it on with the magazine release. Anyway, that's what the instructions say. <coughs> so we're going to... Oh well. That just screws onto there. Remember we're putting an extended mag release on here. So I'll just get this out of the way quickly. Is that right? Yep, that's right. Where's the damned hole? too tight. That's better. This comes with a uh, its own spring which is good. Hopefully this will not go flying across the, the room. Let's get that in. There we go. Screw that down again. And see how that's functioning. Okay, this is mostly faff from now on. Yep, that's
that's working. Okay, great. This is almost it, would you believe? We are almost done. The only bits we've got to do now are really mount the sensors. Oh, and the switch. The switch is a pain in the bum. You get all these bits, you get screws to uh, put it in place. I find that rather frustrating. So I'm waiting for my uh, rotary tool battery to recharge. This just fits on there. And that just screws in there. Nice and simple. Now if this, if you were just doing the there we go. If you were just doing the basic kit, that would be it. You just have to mount the screws, put this on. Uh, I'm going to tidy up a bit now because things are getting a little uh, tricky, a little messy. Uh, we're going to mount this on the jam door. That's just a couple of screws. And we have them here, and then we're going to put in the sensors. I suppose what we should be doing, I've got to wait until the jam door, until the rotary tool battery is done. I'm going to put the switch in on the other side. So, yeah. whoops. Ah. Just, ah, for. There we go. Mount the switch on the other side, and then screw all that in. Okay, let's clear up a bit now. Okay, uh, we're cooking on gas. The display screen and the controller simply screw on. That will plug into this little uh, socket later. This is the first sensor. I've had to trim a little bit off the... Uh, dark guide on the cage because I think that might have interfered with that. I'm not certain that it would but I don't really want to take the chance. Okay now that wire goes in there. This is the fiddly bit. Everything else is installed on that side. This is the uh, other sensor. This is actually the thing that fires out the infrared beam. Oh, I'm gonna have to trim that as well aren't I? I'm gonna have to dremel that. Buggeration. Okay, I better do that now. I'm going to cover that up because I don't want plastic dust getting in there. I'm going to have to trim a bit off that as well. Oh, this is what I said it was fiddly. Okay, I think that's got that. Yeah. Ah. Well, hopefully that won't interfere with the performance of the... Uh, yeah, that should do it. That's good. Makeup brush. 
really useful for getting rid of dust and things. Never leave home without one. There we go. So this fits onto the other side about there, which means you've got to uh, do those. Now, while I was waiting for my battery to recharge, I started putting the switch in on the other side. And this happened, this is the second time this happened. They give you these little screws to drill the holes with. If you've got any possibility of using a drill of some sort, I would really recommend you use those because these screws, these screws lose their heads. So that's a bit shit. But you can't have everything. Let me see, drill bit, drill bit, drill bit. I need something that big. How about that? Yep, that's perfect, right. No, get a new colour for the Dremel, no. Ah! There we go. Ah. Like I say, this is the tediously boring bit. Screwing everything in. So, I'm going to drill those out. Put that in, uh, and I'm gonna grind out that hole in the centre because I don't want to have to muck about with screws that have lost their heads. Is that the right size? Looked like the right size. That bloody is now. Okay, so basically <coughs> you drill three holes in this. Here, here, and here. And then you <sighs> put some screws in. Let's get that off. Trim that down as well. Right. It only fits on one way. There's one. There's, let me make sure I'm putting this in the right place. There's two. And there's three, whoops. Yeah, like that is really improperly. Okay. And now we are going to have to drill that hole out, but I haven't got a drill big enough for that. So guess what? It's back to the uh, router bit, which I use far more than I probably should for pretty much everything. It's the most single useful. There's some cutting discs and drill bits are the single most useful Dremel heads I've got. So I'm going to hold that down and I'm going to drill through.
we go. Now, where's the switch? Where's the switch gone? Is the switch going to fit through that? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. There we go. So now what we do is we cut out this bit in the middle. Clippers, 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 clippers. I'm just going to clip these bits out. A few strokes with a file. To neaten that up. There's my half round file. There we go. Quick file there. Everything's good. This goes in there, and this goes on there. And we screw it in place with. Some screws. Ah, you don't see, need to see me doing screws up. Okay. Uh, I've installed the sensor and I've installed the switch after drilling it out. You use uh, smaller screws for that. Before you put the uh, actual lever on the outside you'll make sure that this functions properly so I'm going to leave that there. And this is the other sensor. These two bits are the most fiddly part of the whole build because I've got to put this in here which isn't hard. It's not difficult. The difficulty is getting everything lined up. And the right way around. Okay, that's in there. And we're gonna just gently put everything up here. Make sure that that gets tucked out of the way which is harder than it looks. <sighs> I don't want anything pinching. Okay. Ah, this wire here that you can't see has to go in this little gap here. So that goes in there where it will hopefully be kept in place by the... Yep, I'm going to put a couple of screws in there now to hold all that together. And I'm going to put, let me see... Uh, oh, I'm going to put one up here. Oh, hang on. Tactical rope catch. Oh, for the love of God. Okay. Well, how the hell did that go? Okay. Make sure everything's in there. Get that out of the way. Seated properly. Is that seated properly? No, that needs to be there. Okay, that's better. Right. Tuck those out of the way. And of course, they're going to 
end up getting caught again. So we're going to have to push those back in. This is just the test, obviously. <sighs> yep. Now, what was I doing? Oh, yes, I was going to put a screw in there to hold everything together. Once I've got this in, I'm going to test it for function. I'm not going to chrono it just yet. There we go. Just to make sure everything works properly before I button it up and do the hot glue. That needs to go down there. Get in there. Okay, and now I've got the incredibly joyous, wonderful, lovely task of fitting this little wire the right way round in there. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to move this off camera with a bit of light. Okay, I actually managed to get everything uh, connected up without breaking my uh, heart, so let's test it. Turn single shots. Okay, one select fast drive ready to chrono, one chronograph, one freshly charged battery, one 35 round drum loaded with brand new spanking genuine Accufakes. Let's see what we're going to get out of this. Uh, we'll try it on. Semi also first. Let's see what we're going to get. Plug that in. Okay, uh, this is going to be quite tricky because I've got to hold this, the battery, and the chrono uh, all at once. Okay. Good. Now let's put this on uh, put this on three round burst and see what we get. I was getting a high of 143 even on semi. Oh, sorry, on burst. And now let's just mag dump the whole thing out. All in all, I'm quite pleased with that. Just hope I haven't decapitated any of the dots. Okay, that's the end of the video. I've been me, you've been the audience. That's a select fast drive and how to do them so they don't blow up on you. Brilliant. Thanks for watching and uh, you know how it works. Oh, And that was getting on full auto 821 darts a minute, which is quite a lot.
turn that off. Yeah, comments in the comments section, suggestions. If it's something I'm doing you like, tell me and I'll do more of it. If it's something I'm doing that you don't like, I don't care. But tell me anyway and I might adjust the way I do things. Uh, brilliant. Thanks for watching and hopefully talk to you soon. I love these things.